started. Um, so Thomas, thank you for uh, sitting down and chat with me today. Thank you for having me. For sure. Um, amongst these crazy times, and we were we were just talking about uh, how it's particularly crazy for for your business. Um, you're currently head of growth at Hopier, uh, but you've spent um, several years kind of in growth marketing, and you've done some freelance work, and even had your own agency. Um, would love to kind of just give listeners some context, uh, if you could, if you don't mind, just sharing about like what Hopier is and and what it does. Yeah, my hair is actually way too long. I just realized that from <laughs> from this. Yeah, I got. I had to, I really have to cut my hair. <laughs> you know what? I I just I just uh, bought this this uh, <laughs> this amazing <laughs> product to cut my hair. I actually tried to cut my hair with my um, with my shaving device, and uh -huh. it didn't work really well. So I purchased this. <laughs> but <laughs> people who are gonna view this. I usually have shorter hair, um, but uh, yeah. We are in, in April 2020, so for the people who will uh, watch this like a year from now, yeah, uh, they, they will understand why <laughs> <laughs> why my hair is uh, is too long. Um, but so yeah, I, I actually forgot your your first question. <laughs> uh, what is Hopier? Yeah, what is Hopier? So Hopier used to be a few weeks ago the best way to purchase all your office needs coming from uh, i mean going from the the snacks healthy snacks um office drinks office supplies so the office managers uh could go to the platform and purchase all these items in one platform so that's really what we were offering like it's a one um one platform for everything that you need instead of going to the growth the grocery stores for some items or to Amazon for other, like you have one platform. And then we were enabling um, the, I mean, the, the automated orders. So once you know basically what your employees want, then some of them, like some of the purchases can be automated so that you don't have to go back each week and, and order a new item. So that was, um, that was pretty handful for, for the office managers and then, Obviously, with the coronavirus, we had to rethink the entire business because we ran from a really nice growth to like, of course, um, not many orders as everybody was uh, working from home. And, um, and so we had to rethink. And we've always helped like uh, businesses and, and large groups of people, or like not large groups of people, but um, more like people who buy for large groups of people to really make that buying process as easy as possible. Right. So what we have developed is Hop Your Flex now, which is basically a way to create virtual credit cards for employees at scale. So the HR manager can, uh, or the finance manager, depending on who is going to take care of that in the company, but they can create an account at Hop Your Flex and then decide who will get a virtual credit card for which product categories they can actually uh, purchase stuff mm. and then allocate those cards to employees. And then of course, uh, also allocate budgets to those cards. And so it, it's really interesting for the finance team, for example, who have to deal with so many expense reports and all this um receives for example that they are getting every month for all the employees and when you're getting like 100 employees a thousand employees it's getting um it's getting really annoying to deal with those sure. expense reports so we make the process of um of also like um allocating this employee stipends uh super easy and it's also a way for hr to support remote employees in these difficult times and um, there's obviously a, a, a lot of, uh, there's kind of a lot of operators in, in, in that space. I wonder um, what, are the, what are the primary uses now within this kind of pandemic um, for that? Are they purchasing stuff on Amazon? Are they purchasing like supplies for their home office? 
Yeah, that's a good question. So the one thing, um, so, you know, like there are quite a few products um, in that space, you know, like if, if you take, if you look at the finance, uh, part of it, uh, there are a lot of companies that allow you to create those those cards at scale. We take an HR angle to it, being like, uh, this is a great way to easily support your remote employees right now by just giving them that stipend that they can spend on a few things, which will help them feel better at home and, and uh, feel more included, included or, or feel uh, more productive. So it can go from office supplies. So lots of people, you know, they, they never worked at home. Right. They, they went from, you know, being, you know, having a nice desk at the office to like having to find some way to work at home with the kids, you know? And so one thing that we helped them figure out is like, okay, what, what items exist out there that can help you quite easily set up an office desk, but at home. Um, then, you know, we can get creative in terms of, for example, um, we, they are online great educational or wellness programs, you know? So um, what, what programs online can you find to start your day in a, in a much more productive way, you know? So, mm -hmm. um, and, and also like learn online. So, that's one way um, to use that that um, that extra time that you have, or um, yeah, just um, um, the, I mean, our, our goal has always been like, um, and and especially now is to, you know, understand how to help our customers better. And one thing that HR managers right now need help with is like figure out how to help those remote employees. And so it's a mix of you know being productive at home, but also the, the mental health uh, that is, uh, this, you know, that is also uh, like a big topic right now in terms of how do you make sure that, that employees don't feel lonely, still feel included in, in that company. So you have uh, the, the physical stuff, snacks still really relevant, uh, drinks, the, the desk items, and then the like kind of the mind, the mind products the educational right. items, the wellness items. Um, so two different things for two different goals. Um, we could definitely dive and I could do a whole podcast on um, kind of like morning routines and, and personal development and, and things like that. Um, I'm interested uh, in kind of happier. So obviously uh, this is kind of like a, a subscription business, right? And you are, you kind of shifted from targeting office managers uh, to more so like, I guess, HR professionals is, um, so kind of like your, your customer shifted a bit, right? In terms yeah, of- Yeah, so actually, you know, um, we found out that our persona like shifted a few weeks back. So when we uh, had to create that new product, Hop Your Flex, mm -hmm. first reached out to our current customer base saying, hey guys, uh, we understand that you're not uh, purchasing items from us anymore. And we understand but, why. <laughs> yeah, of course. And we understand why. And, and it's it's okay. You know, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. no, no hard feelings about that. Um, but uh, we have this new amazing platform where you can do all these things. And then the FS managers actually replied with their HR manager in, in CC saying, hey, I think this is a, this is a great um, product for us. But... We, I mean, you should talk to our HR manager who will take it from here. And that's how we figured out, okay, we have to talk to the HR team now. Um, and that's also interesting because we used to have a budget for like per office, you know, like every company has different offices mm -hmm. and then each office has their own office manager. So if we were to convince one customer, it was one office manager. So one example is, is Shopify. So one of our customers is still at um, uh, the moment, but of course they, they put the collaboration on hold, but um, Shopify New York was a customer. Okay. Now they, have, they have a lot of offices, but 
we had to, you know, then have an upsell slash cross sell strategy to try to convince the other offices of Shopify. And now that we are talking to the HR team, once we have a customer, it's the entire company. And our business model is per, um, per employee per month. So once we convince one customer, then it's a much larger deal than it used to be. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting. It, as when you think of like a head of growth role, um, it can mean so much, right? Depending on, on the company. Um, I'm wondering like, and on your, on your LinkedIn profile, you talk about like you're boosting MRR, um, you're optimizing each stage of that, uh, of the pirate metrics, right? The AAA, RRR. Um, I'm wondering what are your, like, what are your primary acquisition tactics now? Obviously you talked about kind of going into existing customers, um, but would love to hear about like how that acquisition strategy is, is now shifted. Yeah, so the thing is, you always start with who you're talking to, right? Mm -hmm. So um, we shifted from um, from that office manager to that HR manager. So I had to first understand, okay, who is an HR manager, you know, and 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 deep dive into the the ideal customer profile before thinking of the channels. And so pretty fast, I realized that uh, especially in these times that the, the companies that were um, allocating budget for stipends were corporates. All the other ones, you know, they, of course they care about the employees, but they're not in the mode of thinking about this. Like they are trying to cut costs everywhere. Sure. Uh, where, um, where the corporate world still has means to, and, and also, uh, and time, you know, means and time to, to be thinking about those things. And then the next thing I did is I talked to a few corporate, corporate HR managers and I realized pretty quickly that um, in the corporate space, especially in the US, but quite everywhere in the world, um, HR managers, they have some sort of accreditation. Um, and so I talked with, uh, with an HR manager in the UK who told me about that and then I found out that it's a really big thing in the US where um, if you want to go up the, the corporate ladder, you better have a pretty solid uh, accreditation. And if I remember correctly in HR, it's uh, ACHM or something mm. like this. I don't remember exactly how it's called. But then the great thing is you can look at LinkedIn groups, uh, Facebook groups, and figure out you know what are people talking about right now um what are their fears challenges and then rethink the content strategy based on those those challenges so um we we um based on those insights from those linkedin groups very specific linkedin groups from my ideal customer profile i was able to understand what blog posts uh, we should be writing right now like, or like what online tools we should be creating and also what i figured out is that HR leaders, they are hungry learners. Like they want to learn like crazy. And the other thing I found out is like, oh, like that, that I knew is that we were a new player in that space. So I was looking into ways to talk to um, HR leaders with uh, either like their own personal brand or who work for big brands so that their brand image, you know, reflects upon us. So a few things I did is, uh, first of all, we rethought the content strategy and ran Google Ads um, to get people to those content pieces. And not really like, uh, like nobody is really looking for an employee stipend program right now, but they are looking for ways to keep remote employees happy and engaged, you know? And so they are looking for solutions about that specific challenge. But like, um, I usually think of the Google Ad Google AdWords strategy in terms of uh, what are the, the highest intent keywords, right. and then you go you go down. You know, so if people were looking for employee stipend program, I was like, oh, that's amazing. But I tried that, and nobody is actually looking for that. So you have to go a step a step um, a step deeper and think, okay, now 
what are, what, are they, what are they looking for if, it, if it's not employee stipend program? And so they are looking for those big challenges right now. And, and these, these blog posts then have a, a lead gen form where that then have like an email flow, you know, to that, that's the traditional thing. But um, that's for Google Ads. And then for the HR series that I, that I created is um, we interview once a week an mm-hmm. HR leader who tackles like uh, one of the pains that, um, that HR managers have that again, I found out through the groups. And for example, we started one, uh, one well, the first one was last week and uh, the topic was, you know, how to successfully tra- transition uh, from work office to work from home, you know? So, sure. and it's a very contextual problem because if we are going to run that video next month, it's too late, you know? So um, we're going to start, sorry, we have started this, this uh, video interview series where we use or like we, we talk with one HR manager about a specific topic. And mm-hmm. that video is like, it's, a, it's an amazing source of content for us because we get all the quotes we need. We get all the ideas for um, the next blog post. We, we create like four small videos from that big video that mm-hmm. we share on social, that we use for ads. And uh, so the content strategy was, um, has been rethought pretty fast. And then our strategy right now is just to, you know, boost those content posts, generate them on, uh, or like get them on specific landing pages and, um, and, and try to talk, to talk to the lead as fast as possible. Before we used to have a fully online onboarding process, mm-hmm. but it's not something that you can build in just a few days. So right now, to convince our customers, we have to talk to them. So we are trying to incentivize them to um, um, to talk to us. So we have, of course, the start of free trial, but uh, something we we are trying right now is um, if you book a demo with us, you'll get $100, uh, which you can spend then um, for yourself, you know? So, mm-hmm. You, we, we give you a virtual credit card for you and we know it's a hard time for HR managers, which is true. So, you know, like the first 100 bucks is on us and spend it the way you want, getting office supplies for your home or, or great food for you. I mean, spend it uh, the way you want, but um, the first 100 bucks is on us. Uh, that, that's great. Thank you for, thank you for highlighting that. Um, there's, there's a kind of, there's a lot of questions that, that come to mind. Um, <laughs> I, I do like that, uh, you know, you, the way that you thought about the copy and, and the messaging in terms of um, talking about the things that they care about rather than like calling it the program that it is. Like they're searching for ways to keep their employees happy at work rather than this specific type of like benefits program right i thought that was really smart um i wonder in terms of kind of just like uh the the funnel and 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 how you're um onboarding folks when you say google ads you're talking about paid search specifically and google display ads so um, we are again like if you look at what people search nobody is searching for stipend program or benefits right. program, but they are looking for ways to make remote employees feel better at home. Which um, is a stipend so, program or benefits program. That's the, stipend the kind of program, point, right? Yeah, so actually, you know, the first article we wrote is like, uh, what is an employee stipend program and, and why you should have one? Because actually, if you look at HRFs, for example, and you, and you, and you type stipend, like lots of people are searching for what is stipend and what is a stipend program. So, but like the volume was just not there. Um, so we, we, we um, created another article, which is like five strategies on how to keep remote employees happy and engaged and employee stipend program is one of those five, you know, um, you can, you can also have a very, very uh, flexible, you know, work policy to, uh, to enable parents to, you know, work whenever they want. That's another way, you know, to, 
to keep them uh, to keep them engaged. And that's it's part of a bigger picture than just saying, "Hey, you want an employee stipend program? Here it is." You are uh, you know you you go a step further and and help them um, at a deeper level. Sure, um, completely makes sense. And so the the strategy is very much like whether it be a search ad or a display ad bringing them into into the blog post and then at the blog at the end of the blog post there's a there's you know like a landing page or a call to action to to sign up to get that free trial to get that $100 um, are you also incorporating retargeting at all in in that play um yeah i mean um that's where you know that's that's when we try to cap to capture the email really fast and then we sure. have an email flow uh, we also do social retargeting not that much, actually, and we should do uh, we should do more. But um, the way the way I want the, the I want to do it is um, incentivizing incentivizing them. Sorry to um, to talk to us because I know it's a big friction, right? It's much easier to get leads when you have like a free trial and and you know you can just try it out for yourself. And the onboarding floor is is uh is well made and, and well thought of now we don't have that onboarding flow yet because we just started with hopuflex so we have to talk to them and that's also a way for us to get insights and i know for an hr leader right now it's it's not easy to spend time talking to a salesperson so you know it's like motivation less less friction the friction is really high so I'm trying to find ways to increase the, um, the motivation level by saying, hey, if you take the time to talk to us, we'll give you $100 that you can spend on what, whatever you want. And you, you could argue, okay, well, you're going to attract lots of people who just want 100 bucks, but I yeah. don't think so um, because we, we know that they are HR managers because that's something we can, we can verify pretty easily. And an HR manager right now is not going to spend half an hour or 20 minutes on the call just for $100. $100. Like they have yeah. other things to do. So if um, it's like an, an extra thing that might, you know, push them to say, hey, okay, I'm going to book a call with those guys. But uh, I don't think we'll attract you know, just people who want, who want the money. Uh, yeah, that, that totally makes sense. Um, I think uh, one of the other things that, that I think about obviously like you're you just made a big pivot right like a pretty big pivot um and I'm I kind of get the sense of the way that your thought process is like you started by doing a little bit of research and really understanding your customer persona and and then and only then kind of like uh, attacking a strategy and even part of the content strategy and I love I love thinking about like batching and repurposing I love how you did that like we're going to start an interview series we're going to learn about our customer by doing this interview series. We're going to create all this different content and then repurpose it. Very smart. Um, I'm wondering like, you know, from, and I've been at, I've been at startups as well um, where it's like, it's the first time you're doing something when you're at a large company and you're, you're evaluating, for example, like Facebook performance and you're, you're spending a lot of money and you've spent a lot of money. Uh, you can kind of it, evaluating performance is a little bit different. I'm wondering how you're thinking about that, like how you're thinking about like, are these campaigns actually doing well? Um, because it's the first time that that you're doing it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, first of all, like, um, I'm not looking at ROI right now. The reason being, I want to know if, um, if we are talking to the right audience. So I just want to know, is there an interest for what we are talking about right now and and if there is an interest who is clicking who is reading you know so of course we need to uh have some sales in the short term so i'm talking i'm, I'm thinking about sales as well of course but i'm more interested in validating who we should be talking to because i'm all about deciding on one persona and then the entire you know brand marketing strategy is around helping that specific target audience so and then if you you know if you understand your audience really well and what their pains are the things that you should be building you know will make sense 
And, um, and so I, I want to test now using Google AdWords, Facebook ads, LinkedIn ads, email marketing, blogging, video content, quite a few things. And my main goal is that, should we talk to finance? Should we talk to small business owners? Should we talk to HR? Um, should we talk to other people that we don't even know exist or like are interested in, in that specific product? So I want to get reach. I want to get clicks. I want to see who goes to our website. I want to see who engages with our content. And then I'll be, you know, thinking and really thinking about how to create a sales funnel for that specific uh, audience. But right now I'm in um, like top of the funnel content mm -hmm. um, and kind of shooting in different directions with that to understand who the audience is. And then I will be creating different types of content for different stages of the conversion journey for that specific audience. But I don't have the resources to create the sales, like a really, really well-made sales funnel for two or three uh, different target audiences. Um, what type of like indicators are you looking at to identify what audience is actually resonating with the content? Yeah, so definitely like uh, the people who who book calls. Um, that's um, that's what uh, interests me the most. Now, I mean, you could argue that uh, you know, like uh, clicks, or of course uh, the people who read your your blog posts and actually read read them. You know, uh, yes. that you can also track. Um, so the the people who take the time to read your content, not just you know go to your blog post and then leave. But that that you can show the people who actually spend three, four, five, ten minutes on 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 your blog, um, the people who book calls. That uh, I mean, those those two metrics would be uh, the most interesting for me right now. Um, so the people who show interest and the people who are that interested that they're actually gonna spend 20, 25 minutes with us, understanding what we are about. Cool. Um... Yeah, that 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 makes sense. Obviously, it's kind of like putting 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 your money where your mouth is in a sense. Um, you're evaluating your strategy, and you can see who is kind of um, engaging with the content and maybe being at the top of the funnel. But like the ultimate KPI, obviously, is subscribers, and so getting as close to that metric, looking at booked calls, seems to make the most sense. Um, one follow-up question there, and this is something that I, that was challenging at my last, the last startup I was at rally. Um, and I think that's something challenging for B2B companies or subscription-based companies. Um, if you aren't getting enough of that final number, right? If you're, if you're a smaller business where maybe your ultimate KPI is subscribers, but you're only getting five or 10 of them a week. Um, maybe it's like a, a, a larger business. How do you, how do you think about that? Um, because when you're doing tests, you want statistically significant data. And if that final metric is booked calls and you're only getting like three, how do you, how do you think about that? Yeah, that's a tough one, man. Um, <laughs> I, so I used to work at, uh, I mean, not work. I co-founded a growth marketing agency and, uh, we used to work with B2C e-commerce brands. That, that was um, our main target. And that's so much easier. You have, uh, for some of them, we have millions of people on the website. So, you know, you don't have to think anymore in that case. So right now it's much more about qualitative insights than quantitative insights. Um, what are people telling us, you know, um, in, in those goals, you know, that can make us understand that there is a really strong pain and they don't really, you know, they haven't found a really good solution for solving that pain right now. That's much more powerful right now than, than looking at hard KPIs in terms of um, calls booked or clicks or traffic. We don't have the volume to, to make um, really informed decisions based on those, based on those quantitative data. So that's, uh, that, that would be, uh, that would be my, my answer to that. And, uh, I mean, 
that's I think a big issue in the B two B space, right? So if you're gonna launch, uh, you know, A B test, or if you want to, if you want to run any kind of test, mm -hmm. that's uh, which is like the, um, you know, one of the ground rules of the growth marketing process, and you're in the B two B space, there aren't that many companies that provide you with the right volume to have significant enough results to say, okay, I have, you know, I have the confidence that test A was better than test B. Right. So you have to, yeah, you know, you have to play with kind of your, your experience with as a growth marketer, uh, qualitative data in terms of what people say, what, what your customers say, and then kind of using this, uh, this quantity data to to try to figure out whether it's a it's a good decision or not but so solely using those data right now it we don't have the, the right volume for that right that that makes sense um <laughs> uh i i really i really appreciate your time i know that we're we're out of time now um i guess like i'll let you have the 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 final thoughts anything that that you would like to kind of say about you know where Hopier is. I think this is a really interesting conversation, especially given the time, especially given the fact that that you're going through this pivot. Um, but yeah, any parting words? So you want me to give like a, any, any extra tips or advice or any questions sure. that I have or? Yeah. Um, yeah, so one thing I, I would say is like, uh, especially in the, in the B2B space, um, or in, in the B2C space, like be careful with the bullshit sales messages. Like the, um, I hope you are well, or it's really hard for all of us. Uh, I would be very, very careful with these messages, especially right now. And if, it, if it's a sales message, like be honest about it. So one thing that has been working really well for me is be extremely honest when I do like cold outreach, for example, or when I send an email, I'm like, hey, sorry, but this is like a, a cold email or like it's a, it's, it's a cold message, but I think you're going to enjoy what I have to offer. You know, like, don't try to hide that. Just say it like right. straight, uh, be brutally honest. I think there is a lot of, um, really like a lot of bullshit, uh, especially in the US and with everything that's going on and, and all the false communication about everything. I think on, honesty is like a lost value. And when, when you're being honest and, um, and also like, you know, sharing some struggles, some personal struggles, it can be about your own company. Like, hey, we, we, we're having a really hard time. So um, we, we are reaching out to new potential customers, you know, or like you as, as a person, like uh, sharing something that's, that's really hard right now, or like sharing the fact that you're sending this email from your close, like very small room in your home. And it's, 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 uh, it's, it's pretty hard right now, you know, being quite, um, quite personal and, and honest, I think will deliver quite um, interesting results. Cool. Um, thank you so much, Thomas. Uh, it was a, uh, it was a pleasure and, um, yeah, uh, stay, stay safe in, in the meantime. Um, and yeah, thank you so much. My pleasure. Thanks, Paul. All right. Bye, Thomas.